Today, more and more people are trying to live off grid. More and more people are putting in solar power systems and trying to set themselves up so they don't need to pay the utility company. And I think so that they have a certain amount of independence and autonomy. And one of the things that I see is a lot of times people talk about not putting in a generator and they have their reasons. A generator is loud and noisy and other people can hear it. And a lot of people trying to go off grid don't want other people to even know they're there, much less hear them. So they think, I don't need a generator, but I'm going to tell you that you do need a generator. And I'll tell you the number one reason why I say that here in a little bit. So first, let me set the background for you. I built my off-grid cabin in the woods, or I started to anyway, 15 years ago. And I put in my power 14 years ago, and it's a complete do-it-yourself solar power system. So I've got plenty of battery power. In fact, I've got more battery power than I can typically use even in my three to five days of autonomy. Because when you build a off-grid power system, you want to build in what they call autonomy, which is the number of days you can run without sunlight. Three to five days. That's typically what people try to do. Now, if you're building an off-grid system, but you're really in the grid or in town where you're hooked up to a grid and you don't put in battery backup, well, this video is not for you. This is for those that are building these off-grid cabins out in the woods and they're just trying to build a system that's robust and that they can run off of without any worry and frankly, it's quiet and people can't hear. So why do they need a generator? Well, first of all, let's talk about solar power and how it works. Obviously, everybody knows you get solar panels, but in past videos, I've made a point of saying that you don't really have solar power, you have battery power. And that, folks, is really the key to understanding how off-grid power systems work. You have to have batteries because the sun doesn't shine 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It doesn't, we all know that. One of the things that I always suggest to people is look up your region where you plan to build and find out how many days of sunshine you have in that area. You can find that data simply by doing a quick search. In the area that I live, it's about 265 days a year, but I live in a desert. And the other 100 days of the year are partly sunny and you could still generate solar power on most of those days, just not as much. Because you can generate solar when it's cloudy out. But you ain't generating solar on the west coast when it's dumping two inches of rain on you in 12 hours and the clouds are black. <laughs> you know, you might get a little bit, but you ain't getting much. So that's one of the first things I would say is you have a battery powered system and how well solar itself works depends on how many days of sunshine you get. If you get periods of time that are weeks or months long where you don't have any direct sun or bright sunlight, clear skies, all that kind of stuff, then you got to have alternatives. Now, some people will say, yeah, but I'm going to put in wind turbines. Well, that's okay. You can do that. But what about when the wind ain't blowing. Most wind turbines require a minimum of a five mile an hour wind to produce power and they generally need to have 10 miles an hour or more to actually produce much power. So if you're in a place that's breezy but it's not really windy, well you may not actually get a lot of production from that. So how does solar work? So solar obviously you've got your batteries as I said, got to have those and the batteries are the reserve power that you're going to run off of when you have no other means of providing power. And what that means is if you've got solar panels, but it's midnight, you're not generating any power. If you've got a windmill, but the wind isn't blowing, well, you're not generating power. If you have micro hydro, which is a small turbine usually put into a PVC pipe that's set in a stream somewhere where you've got enough head that is distance from where the start point of the water coming into the pipe is and where the exit point is, that distance. If you've got enough of that to keep that micro generator turning, that little turbine in that pipe turning and generating power, that's great. It can work really, really well. But what if it freezes? I mean, if you're in a stream that can freeze because you're living in a northern climate, not going to work. All those times you got to run off battery. Battery's it. You can even, like some people think, well, I'll just plug in my EV, my electric vehicle, because it has a big battery and that can help run things. Yeah, but what about when it's empty and you still don't have any production by wind, by solar, or by water? Well, folks, 
That's why you need a generator. You can build up days and days and days of autonomy in your battery bank. I have about 8,700 kilowatt hours of battery reserve at the cabin, and I don't even use a third of that overnight typically. So I can easily go between that three to five days, and frankly, I could stretch it even further as long as I keep my electric usage down enough. But what happens when I'm past that three to five days or six or seven or whatever it is and the sun still ain't shining? Now you might think, well, that's never going to happen. Well, guess what? Where my property is, it's an arid pine forest. That means I only get about 14 inches of rain a year. And so you might think, well, gosh, you know, that's not that many days of cloudiness. True. But I get most of that moisture between November and probably March with a, with a heavy dose in June. But I can tell you this, after 14 years of solar, pretty much I don't generate much power at all in December and January and February. I just don't. I don't get enough sun. It's low enough on the horizon and it's cloudy and snowy enough that typically I'll never even get out of bulk charge on both of my charge controllers just doesn't. Don't ever, hardly ever go to float at all during that time. That means that I'm not even getting enough solar to get my batteries back up to 100% if I'm using them. I'm, I'm living in my cabin and I'm keeping the lights on as needed and running my refrigerator and all whatever else I run. You need a generator for those times when there's no sun, no wind, and the water in the stream ain't rolling. And there's all kinds of ideas about how you could recharge those batteries but the reality folks is that for an off-grid cabin build you need a generator and that generator needs to provide enough power to charge up the battery bank within two to four hours maximum so let's say if I'm using approximately 30 percent of my whatever it is 8700 watt hours Let's just say I'm using 3,000 watt hours in a 24 hour period that I need to replace with a generator because there ain't no sun. Then I need a generator that can produce at least 1,000 watts. 1,500 would be even better. If I, could, if I could push that much power into my batteries and get them fully charged back up in two hours, four max, that's my personal opinion, then I'm good to go. And that's why you need a generator. You need one for those times when you have no solar production, you have no wind, you've got no water production. If you're using micro hydro, what else are you going to do? Got to turn the generator on. And my recommendation for a generator is to go bigger than you think you need, if possible. Don't go small on a generator. If you know, if you think that a 2400 watt generator is going to do it for you, get a 4K. Because you just don't know what you're going to do. I often find that it's on those times when I'm not getting a lot of solar production that I decide I need to run my table saw and rip down some boards to make some paneling. So I might as well have a generator that can handle running my table saw at the same time it's giving a full charge to my batteries. And my inverter will do that switch. It automatically will switch to shore power, which is my generator power versus off the batteries so that the inverter is essentially providing pass-through power to the cabin from the generator and charging the batteries at the same time. So I'm not running off my batteries at that point. I'm just charging them up. So by the time I'm done using my power tools and the battery banks all charged up, I can shut the generator off and move on. I also recommend quieter generators. A lot of people in the prep-minded community will say, yeah, but a generator makes noise and people can hear it. Well, yes, that's true. So get the quietest generator you can and try to baffle the sound a little bit if you're worried about that. But the bottom line is you're going to have to have a generator if you're living off grid. Now you could say, yeah, but I'm hooked up to the grid. So even though I'm off grid, I've got the grid as backup. Well, number one, then you're not off grid. And number two, what if the grid goes down? What if the grid goes down because we have like a massive EMP and then what? Because you can, you can put EMP shields and all that fancy stuff in like I do to protect your stuff from EMP, but the grid's not protected. So if the grid goes down for any reason and it goes down for an extended period and that's your source to charge up your batteries when you don't have solar, well, you're SOL. Got to have a generator, folks. All right, 
Let me know what you think, because <laughs> I know there are some that don't agree with me. So let me know what you think. I really appreciate your watching, folks. Y'all have a great day. I'll be back to you before you know it. The old jar hit out.